one of my favorite decks I've ever created for Vintage was KCI. I want to try to take an aggro slant to this deck and make some big patchwork automatons attacking for lethal. See you in this very first Friday evening challenge. Welcome back, Vintage Gamers, to the very first Friday Evening Challenge. So this is a 6 p.m. Friday Evening Challenge for me. Um, expecting, you know, four or five hour stream, maybe six. Go a little bit late at night, but not a bad option uh, for whether, you know, I want to stream on a Saturday and lose my Saturday afternoon, or do I want to stream on a Friday and lose my Friday night? <laughs> I was actually talking with somebody. The, the options for East Coast United States are not exactly the best, uh, but they are doable. So um, this is going to be a nice little um, boost to my social life. I get to probably choose whether or not to stream a Saturday or a, a Friday. I'll try to keep um, people informed on Twitter because uh, it'll be maybe it'll be less consistent, a little bit less consistent than than normal because sometimes I won't stream Saturdays compared to I basically streamed most Saturdays for the last few years, um, so I'm pretty excited about maybe <laughs> having access to more of my Saturday afternoons. Um, I wanted to play KCI today. I don't really know why I wanted to play KCI. I don't think it's a particularly good deck or a particularly good deck in the metagame as the most, re most recent challenge, which was yesterday on a Thursday uh, during the day was won by the Medvedev Luris Deathrite Shaman deck. Um, maybe you could say it's a, a 3PO Luris Deathrite Shaman, or maybe you go further back and you say it's a, a Sprouts Luris Deathrite Shaman, but basically a uh, bug deck that forgoes Oko and Leovold and instead plays uh, Luris, won the most recent challenge. So um, probably a bad sign for me to try to play some artifact combo, but this is a really cool version of uh kci in that it has a pretty solid aggro plan b um one of the notable things is you can if you have two sensei's tops uh in play you can draw top putting top on top and then draw top drawing top and playing top and you can play your, your two tops off the top of your library uh for as many times as you have mana uh that combos really well with patchwork automaton uh who gets bigger every time you cast an artifact um, I actually haven't played this deck with the One Ring in it yet. Uh, it's been a couple of years since I've tried this deck. Maybe, maybe a year. Maybe it's been a year since I've tried this deck. Um, I know that this is like a, a very much a Zeus style deck. I, I believe Zeus played a deck like this at Eternal Weekend 2023. Um, and I've streamed many different KCI versions over the, the past few years on the channel. Uh, the, one of the differences I'm going to do in this version is I'm going to play Saga instead of playing Islands and Splashing, Ancestral, Time Walk, and Tinker. I don't really feel like Ancestral, Time Walk, and Tinker are, like, necessary. They were nice upgrades, but not having to worry about my blue mana costs and instead focusing on this Mud Aggro version. Um, obviously, we have, you know, we can loop off and draw our whole deck and, and take infinite turns. Um, but also just like being able to to win a game where we just play creatures and attack, I think is pretty interesting. Um, to facilitate that, we do have some wastelands in the board uh, that'll help us in uh, bizarre matchups. But basically, for anyone who doesn't know, you with a scrap trawler, artifacts that enter the battlefield bring back artifacts that cost less. With a car clan ironworks, you can turn artifacts into two uh, colorless mana by sacking them, and so you sacrifice the lowest cost one, and then you sacrifice one higher, and you get back the lower cost one, and then you sacrifice one higher, and you get back the one, and then you get back the zero, and basically you just do that um, until you win. <laughs> uh, Icar Wellspring being a, a catalyst for this, where it draws when it enters, and it draws when it leaves, and it is net zero mana uh, to cast and, and sack, and that kind of thing. We do have a secondary sack outlet with Arcbound Ravager, which has been pretty nice uh, in the past. And then I have some Foundry Inspectors in here. There probably should be four Foundry Inspectors, but I ended up at 61 cards and I couldn't figure out a good cut, so I cut a Foundry Inspector. I don't feel like this card is necessary in, in KCI at all, uh, but it is kind of nice in this aggro version, especially when you're playing all these four drops that cost more. The One Ring is something I haven't tried in this deck in a while. Um, anything else? Um, nothing really. I have some dismembers for Mono White and some, some key sideboard tech pieces, but nothing crazy. So, 
I will see you in round one of this first ever Friday challenge. Have you ever wanted to win your own real Black Lotus? The legendary NYSE Vintage Tournament returns this June 22nd on Long Island in New York. 15 proxy high stakes paper vintage action with eight whole pieces of unlimited power as prizes. You are not going to want to miss it. Check out more information in the description below. I hope to see you there. Let's battle. All right, here we go. Round one of our first Friday challenge. We ended up with 48 players. Uh, five minutes before the start of this event, we had 29 players, and it needs 32 to fire, and now we ended up with 48 players. So uh, I guess uh, not me is correct there. 10 players did join in the last seven seconds, uh, and I have not enough mana to play any magic cards. So mulligan. This hand has a lot less mana, or not a lot less mana, has two mana, but uh, probably a keep... Especially against a Luris deck. Probably going to put away this ring and keep all the things that we can cast. Alright. Bobble Gaming. So the Bobble means they're not on the Deathrite Shaman version of the, of the, new, the newest Luris bug deck. So it means they're probably either a Luris Control deck, being blue-white, blue-black, or Esper, or a Luris Combo deck, being Breach, PO, Breach, PO, or Turbo Volt Key. Everyone has determined that Luris is indeed the truth, and we are back into a Luris metagame. Uh, it was interesting. For a long time, there really wasn't very much Luris going around. It was all very much Tinker decks. But uh, So... My opponent can't pay for the ping for a Bowmaster here, so we're just going to go Ancient Tomb and play a Patchwork Automaton. And then next turn we can play a Patchwork Automaton, play a Mox, boost them both, play a Ravager, and overall be fairly happy with the scenario. Um, the biggest problem with our deck is going to be the fact that the opponents can, if they do play them, Time Vault Key or um, Bowmaster Twister without us being able to really stop it. Um, the upside is they don't really have other, they don't really have great ways to interact with us, so. Ah, well, they don't need to interact with us if they simply cast the best magic cards, and Ancestral Recall is one of the best magic cards. Seems good, and I get Wastelanded. Very, very brutal. Let me take a little hit here. And then our patchworks will start growing past their uh, Bowmaster. A time vault of our own. Alright, well, I will play a strip mine. I will play a patchwork automaton. After playing a Mox Emerald. Wait, I'm getting spell pierced. Good lord. Yeah, that's about the biggest nightmare that could have possibly happened. Uh, I can't get rid of the strip mine. I kind of need it. I don't have any mana. This wouldn't have happened if I'd played my Emerald on the first turn of the game, but I guess it would have happened if I'd played my Emerald on the first turn of the game. They just wouldn't have played a Bowmaster. But I uh, definitely wanted to try to sequence both automatons. You're attacking with an, a, a, a token. So you're representing that you have a second Bowmaster. Yeah, I'm not really allowed, allowed, to, allowed to risk that one. <laughs> my my patchwork does, uh, can't die here, or we're in trouble. Yeah, this is why I saved my strip. Another reason why I saved my strip mine, I have to be able to kill the saga. Uh, we're so dead. Wasteland is just so good. Yeah, this game is really bad. Oh, you had a Bowmaster, so they also have another Counterspell, or they would have, I mean, they would have Bowmastered in attacks, right? Ooh, man. I mean, we kept two mana, and uh, it all went away, so. We even drew an Ancient Tomb in this game, right? I don't know. The, the, the chokehold that Wasteland has on this format is just crazy right now. I think in general, I'd probably just need to draw better, though. I did mulligan, and my hand might was a keep, so. <sighs> All 
All right. I guess Bowmaster is theoretically a little annoying if we are going to be KCI comboing. I don't really feel like we're supposed to bring in Wasteland just for Saga, though. I feel like Wasteland is more for Bazaar, but maybe... Because we don't actually have, like, Ley Line of the Void or anything in our sack. Maybe we bring in some number of Wastelands. Because we probably want to trim some amount of other cards. I mean, you can't. You can't You can't restrict Wasteland because they re you refuse to restrict uh, Bazaar and Workshop, right? So, I mean, there is a there is a format that you could restrict, you know, Bazaar, Workshop, Wasteland, and a Saga all at the same time. And it's probably a more interesting format, but it's not vintage, so. Could play more lands. Uh, uh yeah and then i can make my deck bad like i don't know what, like playing more lands is like not 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 actually the solution it's just drawing more mocks in is the solution uh all right i'm gonna bring in some number of these wastelands and then i think i'll bring in chalice on the play and i think i'm gonna trim uh on two ironworks and i think i'm going to trim on a i don't know an inspector and we'll try running like this <laughs> yeah, it's a little a little late for you, Sahar. Yeah, I I, I mean I I, under, I understand the concept of how lands work. Thank you, thank you for the explanation. <laughs> but like to make a good vintage deck, you want to play the least number of lands as possible. <laughs> I mean, you can control how many mocks in you draw. You just need to mulligan more. This is a great hand. Just slam a, a one ring and make him have a counter. <laughs> hey, look, uh, it turns out I, I have these lands in my deck that are worth three lands. It's crazy. It might be broken. Who, who, could, who could tell? <laughs> who, 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 who could ever tell? Uh, all right. I got negated four cards from my opponent. Wasteland? No, Wasteland. They got a Moxon again, though. And a DT. So they have an Ancestral coming? That's not good for me. I rate that as bad for me. I mean, they're definitely getting an Ancestral, right? Like, there's no other choice. It's the only good card left in their deck. Eh, I guess you could get Twister, theoretically. All right, I'm going to get a Patchwork Automaton, and then I'm going to play a top, and then I'm going to play a key, and then I'm going to draw an extra card while I still don't get Bow Mastered. And then I'm going to play a top. And I made a 4 4. <laughs> My own little Tarmogoyf. All right. Ancestor Recall, I assume. Let's see. Yep. Ancestor Recall. Back up to six cards in hand. Now, what's their play, though? Because they don't really have good answers for this patchwork typically. Saga's a good one, though. Soul Ring's a good one. Moxin's a good All right. Well, they just draw. Okay. So now they have enough mana to do anything they want. See, drawing Moxin, pretty good. Notably quite strong. Ravager. Can I make lethal attack here? Probably not. What do I want to do? Pretty sure I'd like to know what's in my top cards here. Ooh, there is a one ring. It's a pretty good one. I have lots of choices, really, because I can use my Ravager and um, sack my Sapphire, sack my key, bring back my Sapphire. How much mana do I have? Three, four, seven. So I could actually um, play my Scrapwork uh, Trawler first and then draw into my one ring. I mean, I could just do top and make a very big patchwork automaton is totally another choice. I think that's like not, I, I mean, yes, we, we pointed this out in the beginning section of the, of the, of the stream. That is one of the main combos in the deck. 
I think that is setting myself up to not be able to win, but I do have a manifold key, so it's not like they can chump block it. I think this turn, I would be more interested in deploying as many cards as I can. So what I think I'm going to do is I think I'm going to play a, a Trawler here. And then I'm going to... Then I'm going to play a land. Oh, I think I did the math on this wrong, didn't I? Uh, Yeah, I did the math on this wrong. I don't have nearly enough mana, do I? Oh, wait, I might still have enough mana. Because I sack, I sack. I might still have enough mana. All right, so if I sack my Sapphire, the Ravager, and I tap my top, draw a card, sack it to the Ravager. I guess this is going to make it so I can't do the top thing next turn. So maybe this is worse. Yeah, this is going a little too deep, probably, right? Because I can. I can go Sapphire, sack it. Man manifold key, sack it. I mean, I have another top coming. Like, that's probably fine, right? Okay, sack this. Sack this. Because I, I, did, I did the math, Chess. Do the math. Actually, I might have missed lethal then. If my opponent has absolutely nothing, could I have killed my opponent? That's another question. How big are we right now? We're pretty damn big. Because we know what we're drawing, right? And it's just a top. So I currently have 9 and 14 damage. I probably had... I probably, I might have had lethal if I had done something else. All right, so if I sack, let's keep going here. So if I sack this uh, Sapphire, and then I sack the, the ring. Do I want to sack the ring first? I guess I should. All right, so let's sack the Sapphire, and then sack the ring and bring back a Sapphire. I feel like this is going to be lethal, right? Sack the ring. Bring back a sapphire. Because I want mana. And then I play the sapphire. Yeah, we got it. We got we got it lethal here. Uh, play the top. Lethal attack. Okay, so I do think I did that wrong, though. I think the ring was worse than getting, like, another Ravager or a top or something. Uh, I did, definitely did not do the math there. But apparently, I mean, like, you can't go into this line assuming that it will work because they could have a Fatal Push, right, for the Ravager at the beginning of the loop or even for the Scrap Trawler at the beginning of the loop. Um, actually, I guess they can't have a Fatal Push for the Scrap Trawler because they don't have a card entry in the yard. So they, But they could have a Fatal Push for the, the Ravager at the beginning of the loop. I assume the new cards are next week. I'm very excited for new cards because I'm very, uh, out of ideas. <laughs> Alright, so we, able to, we were able to get a nice little patchwork turn 3 kill there. That was pretty cool. Uh, I'm going to put the Chalice back out. I'm going to take the Trinisphere out on the draw as well. I just kind of assume my opponent will have, like, way too many mocks in for this to be good. I think I'm bringing all the Wastelands on the draw, right? You just kind of need Saga answers. I guess at that point, you should be bringing in a Needle to get off your Saga. Though, I, I mean, are our Sagas ever going to finish? Probably not. I actually kind of like the idea of a blocking Ballista. I need new cards, please. <laughs> maybe maybe I won't play. I, I mean, like, how do we beat constructs that are, like, large? I mean, we, we make bigger constructs, I guess. I don't know. Like, all of our cards seem, like, pretty reasonable. Do you, like, take out Karn on the draw? Maybe you take out Top on the draw? 
Bro, I don't know. <laughs> All these cards seem fine, but they don't seem good. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Or it, it, it's 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 the in, it's the combo. We just went over it. It's the combo. Ah, <laughs> uh, I have to mulligan this hand, right? Three, four drops, no mana. All the, all the mana in the world. <laughs> what, what if I? What would happen if I played more mana in my deck? Hmm. Uh. So I'm going to bottom. What? Have infinite mana. Not really, but I have pretty close to infinite mana. <laughs> Which one am I supposed to bottom? It's kind of unfortunate. I guess with the, with the mana crypt already here, I can just get rid of the ancient tomb, and it's fine. If I didn't have the mana crypt, then the work, the ancient tomb is like kind of important for saga. But oh, that's the mana crypt. That's the ancient tomb. I mean, you, you have to also keep like your KCI loops. Like, there's not enough one drops in the deck if you take out too many tops, and top is like your best KCI looper. So okay, so. Whatever spell I play is susceptible to spell pierce, right? And technically days. Because I'm probably playing workshop on turn one to give myself seven mana. So I guess the first thing we do is we throw a mana crypt into a spell pierce. Is that actually better though? Or is it better to throw a lotus into a spell pierce? Man. I mean, I could go slower, I guess. I could play scrap trawler. There's so many things you can sequence here, and there's lots of ways to do with it. Lots of things to do. Alright. Do you want to spell pierce my mana crypt? Yes. No? If you don't, then you can't spell pierce anything else, right? So I think you have to, right? But I kind of think the mana crypt might have been more important than the lotus, which is a little... Oh, so the mana crypt is resolving. All right, well, in that case, cast Black Lotus. And then Workshop One Ring. What the fuck? <laughs> that sounds like a good... Oh, wait. Am I going to get bow mastered? Sure. All right. Um, I mean, we're still definitely drawing a card. It gives them an extra plus one counter, but they can't attack this turn. And I could draw more Moxin or something. I draw a key. It's exciting. Oh, all right. So they they ping themselves. They could have pinged their their token instead. All right. I feel like we should uh, key here. We do have to win on our next turn. But that should be doable. Because we have protection for a turn. All right. Your move, opponent. So we're going to take five damage on our upkeep. I mean, we can play a new ring. I'm not super worried about bone master killing us but it might happen if we don't find another protection i guess that could be a problem i guess the ring does kind of solve the bone master problem huh Ooh, strip mine i also don't have a sack outlet yet i could definitely use a sack outlet 
I mean, I'm going to have to find another ring, or I don't think I can win the game at all, so. I mean, we just start by drawing. I guess they could play a second Bowmaster. I would take... I mean, I have to draw a ring, right? I just have to draw a ring? Okay. Let's just activate. Didn't draw a ring. If I use my key, I can't take infinite turns. Should I spin now? I still don't have a sack outlet. Draw four, go to 10. I mean, I just have to find a ring. But I'm gonna have to find a ring again on the next turn though, if I do this, right? I guess technically it'll be hard for me to get it back because I don't have any five drops in my deck, right? I'm also worried if I spin, I gotta get spell pierced. I'm kind of low on mana. All right, I did not draw a ring. I did draw a workshop. I'm at 10. Oh, I guess I can get the ring back if I sack it. Yeah, or the key back if I sack it. Yeah, I don't have a sack outlet. I'm how many? I did board out a bunch of KCIs, right? I have two KCIs boarded out. Pretty sure we're going to have to play Workshop here no matter what. All right, let's spin my top and see what we find. I found the Ravager. <sighs> I mean, I need the Ravager. But I don't have another ring on top, so I'm going to have to block the army. Also, they can shoot... Game's weird. They drew a force off the top of their library. Okay. Uh, so I block and I go to eight. I go to five, four, and then I go to one, and then I can't draw any cards until I find another ring. Oh, I might, I might go to zero because of this, right? Uh, all right. Well, they drew a force off the top of their library, so that was good, bad for me. I guess it's better that my ring didn't get forced. Mm. I wonder if I could have played this game better. Oh, they had a snuff out? Okay, I guess I die then. All right. That's unfortunate. All right, well, I guess we lose. I drew 19 cards, but that was not good enough here. I kind of feel like it was a little unlucky, right? Um, well, I was trying to give myself room. I don't think it would have mattered, right? I mean, I, I didn't really play around removal. Uh, I guess if I thought that they had removal plus force. I mean, they didn't have force in turn one. And I thought they had spell peers, but they were just faking, faking spell peers. I guess if we think that they have, if they have exactly force removal, then it's better to lead Trawler Ravager. Yeah, I guess that's true. I mean, that would not have worked out very well for us. 
if anyways because if we play a trawler or play a ravager and then they just like we can stack something and then with this trigger on the stack like they just they just snuff it out and like we can sack all our things but we can't get anything back right so i don't think it matters we had to draw a second ring i mean a second ring would have gotten forced i don't know maybe we just like went too hard i feel like we're supposed to like just go for it right like we drew so many cards that we're just supposed to go I mean, maybe I under, I over, I mean, did I draw any of my sideboard cards, really? I didn't, right? It's not like I drew sideboard cards. I'm not sure. All right, welcome to round two. We went back and uh, looked at round one and, and determined we were pretty, I think we were correct in our, in our choices. Um, besides... The fact that in the second game where we won with Patchwork Automaton on turn three, we should definitely have gone uh, top, draw top trick, and then draw on a second Ravager. If we draw a second Ravager instead of a ring, we actually are insulated against Fatal Push. Um, that was the one thing that I think we missed there. All right, we are on the play against another Luris opponent, or a cha or a Chancellor revealing opponent, or I guess technically a Mulliganing opponent. Any of those three. <laughs> when there's a pause after no we haven't drawn our cards yet so it's a it's a reveal it's a luris revealing opponent little things that don't actually matter so oh manta was on the taxi you're right what do we got here i don't have the ability to play the one ring on turn one but they're a luris player we've got a foundry inspector it's still probably worth we have a strip mine coming too so we got some we have some uh some tools here. All right, I'm going to play a Foundry Inspector. I'm going to play a Manifold Key for 0. I'm going to play a Sensei's Top. I guess since my Sensei's Top is free, I could theoretically draw with it, hit a Black Lotus and play a one ring. And then if I draw a patchwork, it's actually better that I've drawn with my top. So I think it's just correct to draw. Downside would be I get missed up on the way back through, maybe. Ooh, a KCI. Not the greatest hand for KCI. We have none of the real combination pieces besides top. Obviously, Foundry Inspector, a lot worse than Scrap Trawler in the exact instance of KCI. Uh, but better than the one, uh, better for this one ring, especially because we're not going to have the mana here. Has a Mox Emerald, has a Wasteland, but we have a second workshop. It's nice when we have lands, huh? All right, let's see if we have a Mental Misstep for this top. They might force the top because it looks like it's a draw engine, maybe. I don't know. E either way, I think playing this top first makes sense to me. Did not get countered. So I'm going to play a workshop and I'm going to play a one ring. I could obviously play a car clan ironworks and sack some stuff and play a one ring, but I think I would rather just see if this one ring resolves. I highly doubt it. They're on like a million forces, right? All right. Got a force of will and a mystical tutor out of our opponent's hand. Uh, I guess it's still correct to draw with this top. Maybe I should have drawn with the top in response. Oh, a scrap trawler. Great. All right, so if we don't get Wastelanded again, which I guess is a hard ask here. KCI is still a mana ability, yeah. Uh, then we have some things happening next turn. Whoa, Tropical Island. Are we getting ooped? Oh, no, we're getting Ancestral again. All right, so this is unfortunately the matchup that I was hoping we would not play against. This is the bug deck that's playing Luris instead of uh, Oko and stuff. So they have four Collector Oops in their deck, so... Uh, okay. What do we want to do? Play a strip mine. Uh, if we play a trawler for two, then we can't play an ironworks. So I guess we have to play an ironworks first. I don't have a zero drop in my yard, which is a little annoying. Um, 
Hmm. This ancestral is going to be a problem, huh? Wait, mystical tutor is a little weird, isn't it? All right. So I guess what we should do is try to get a scrap trawler in play. And the only way to do that is to sack. I could sack the inspector, but I don't want to do that until I have one drops in my yard. I think we'll just play a top. If they go for a, a, a force of vigor, we can, I mean, it would be the same as if we were doing the other thing. So I think what we want to do is top, activate key, top, draw, sack top. That'll draw us two cards and give us two mana. And that will let us play a trawler. I think that's the best line forward here. So let's do that. And then still holding priority. Activate again. And then we'll sack this top. So the top goes to the yard. We draw two cards. We keep getting pauses from our opponent. I don't know why. Saga. All right. So if I play the inspector first, my trawler only costs one. And then I can sack an inspector to bring back a top. Or should I just play a trawler? No, I should probably play another inspector. Definitely want to do this pre-combat because we could technically up if we like combo off, we can put one one counters on this other inspector. Play another inspector. I don't know why my opponent keeps pausing. I'm not sure what we're missing. Maybe they have um no, if they had a negation, they would have targeted ironworks. If they had a vigor, I feel like the time you would have vigored has already passed. You could have a mind break trap, maybe. So here. We sack a key to play a trawler and then sack the new inspector to bring back a top. Uh, yeah, I've been playing this set. I don't like this set as much as I like last set. I really, really like um, uh, headliners. I thought headliners were great for the game and were really easy to parse. Um, I'm a little lost in the new set. I'm still stuck in Diamond 1. I can't seem to get to Masters at the moment. Um, but we'll get there eventually. Uh, there's like a lot. Of, I'm pretty happy. Like there seems like there's gonna be a pretty big shakeup in the next patch. So maybe it'll, it'll be better next patch. Maybe who knows? So we're gonna cast a trawler, and we're just gonna sack the key. Um, and then we're gonna sack this inspector to bring back our top they they quit but i don't think they're supposed to quit so we get back a top which is free and then we spin our top three and we get a ring which is good we also get an automaton which loops like we're not lethal here, no. Like pretty much, no matter not no matter what. Like there are definitely sequences that get us a win here. Like if we were to find a zero drop and a an acre acre wellspring, maybe maybe that would be infinite. I don't know. I think my opponent just had enough, which I guess is fair. To be fair, they are very likely to win the games two and three with four collector groups in their deck, so. I'm going to bring in four Dismembers, and I'm going to bring in Argenta Masticore. And I'm going to take out Trinisphere. I'm going to take out two Ironworks. I'm going to take out one Top. I'm going to take out one... Maybe I'm going to take out, like, almost all of my Ironworks. It's kind of awkward, because I can't tutor for Ironworks in this version. Like, I don't have a Tinker, so I kind of want to have, like, two copies, maybe. Um... Obviously, the ring gets shut off, too. But the ring is, like, a, just a much better generic card than Ironworks is. I don't I don't want to get rid of any of my creatures. 
Um, maybe it's just two of my tops. Like maybe it's Volt Key actually. I don't know. Having a key is already nice with the ring, so it's kind of just free. I'm gonna go like this with four dismembers, a massacre, and massacre, <laughs> massacre, and um, just like trimming on some of the activated ability cards. Yeah, I I, I don't think opponents should have conceded there because I definitely didn't see a way through. But they didn't know my hand. They didn't know. Maybe they didn't know what the loop was looking like. Yeah, you don't have to be, like, super crazy about KCI to understand how to play through this one, because I don't include Mirror. Um, this version, in particular, does not have Chromatic Sphere or Chromatic Star or Mirror Retriever. So most of the cards that uh, made things complicated for the modern KCI deck in terms of um, sequencing and uh, a mana, producing mana and mana windows and whatever, whatever those things are all about, th most of those cards don't exist in this version. Um, and so you don't have to learn those kind of things. The only thing, yeah, you want to cast a spell, uh, and then use the KCI to pay for the mana cost, um, to, for, for cost reduction reasons. Uh, but for the most part, like all of the weird stuff is, um, you don't have to learn it for this kind of deck. This hand obviously is a little fragile, but I'm going to keep it. It's got so much fast mana that I, I, and I technically have a dismember for a turn one oof, so... Right, exactly. If you want to sack, sack an inspector, for sure. Wasteland Go. That is annoying, because our saga doesn't produce mana right away. I guess we just simply draw a workshop, and it does not matter. Cool. I like that. Patrick Automaton. Mana Vault. Black Lotus. So then we have a question here. We can go Kark Clan Ironworks, sack the Mana Vault, and play a Trawler. But I think that's worse than just getting a Trawler in play now. This is going to play around things like Vigor better. It plays around Negation a little bit. Um, gives us the ability to, like, go for an Oof on... Uh, a Dismember on an Oof on their turn. Uh, but yeah, I think we're going to hold out for a little bit. And then we'll go on the next turn here. But this is already a great start. Like, if they have a Collector Oof now, it's a little too late. They have to beat a Patchwork and a Scrap Trawler, which are pretty good cards against... Um, what my opponent has going on. Even if they Vigor me, like, it's not that good with a Scrap Trawler already resolved, so... If they're gonna Wasteland my shop, it's not actually that big of a deal. So it looks like they have a Collector Roof on turn two, but they didn't have their Companion Moxen. So now they... Oh, they're going Needle. Uh, what does this even do? It doesn't stop... KCI, because KCI is a mana ability. It stops Ravager. Starps, stops Saga. Stops the ring. Okay, I mean, it's definitely worth bringing in. I'm just I'm just trying to figure out what they're going to do with it right now. If they name KCI, I will be sad for them, obviously, but... They didn't see a Ravager in game one, and they didn't see a ring... Oh, naming Black Lotus, that one is also a mana ability. Okay. I don't believe my opponent will be playing more magic today. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, I, I do think it's going to be very hard for my opponent to win this game as we untap with... They probably Wasteland us and we untap with Saga, Ironworks, Dismember, uh, Scrap Trawler, Patchwork. Second Ironworks is not a great draw. Kind of want to draw land so that I'll have the ability to Dismember after I get oofed, but... I mean, if they have nothing and then we sack... Um, we we sack our mana vault, bring back our black lotus. It's like really good. So, all right, take a W.
All right, round <laughs> round three. We're up against not me. Uh, keep. Oh wait, they're not on Luris. Does that mean they're on Jewel? Uh, how do we ever beat Jewel? <laughs> we just concede. I don't think my deck could ever beat a Jewel player. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. I hope we don't get wastelanded. Patchwork Automaton. Sensei's top. This time, I don't think we're drawing with our top. All right. Well, if we get wastelanded, I guess we have a follow up land, which is nice. What do you got for me, not me? What kind of mana are- Oh, it's Oath! No! I have nothing. I don't even have a cage. No! Evil. It's so evil. I get to combo kill our opponent or we can't win. Uh, I mean, maybe. Trinisphere. Hmm. Um. I don't know what the plan is here. I need a Moxon, kind of. If I were to Wasteland and Trinisphere my opponent, is there a chance I can win? Not really. I think I need to start by drawing a card. I drew a Kark Clan Ironworks. If I spin and I find a Lotus, it's probably better just to play a Ravager. Because it's only Lotus, right? I don't really want to eat this Wellspring right away. But I could. And then I get a spin after. Oh, I've already played my land this turn. So. Ah, Force Pitching Show and Tell on my Ravager. All right, well, we got a Force out of their hand. The problem is they're about to put an Atraxa into play and then get another Force. So, it is a problem. That is a problem. All right, I'm going to play this out, though, because theoretically they can whiff, and then we have a kill next turn, probably. They went 33 cards deep for an Atraxa. Uh, the Besaju is gone, the Yogwill is gone, the Time Walk is gone. It's pretty good. Uh, yeah, but I can't spin if I don't play the Strip Mine, in which case I would have to naturally draw with the top. I don't know if that's a really good play. Uh, the 10 cards revealed with Atraxa do not include a Force of Will, but they do include Show and Tell, Atraxa, Oko, Black Lotus. If they cast Show and Tell, I have some opt. Oh, there's a second Besaju. Jeez, that might be too much. So my opponent kept Brainstorm, Gataxian Probe, Black Lotus, Oko, Besaju. Brainstorm, Gataxian Probe, Black Lotus, Oko, Besaju. Uh, no, it depends, it depends. Yo, what up, Eric? I think we're, like, 0% here. Unfortunately, there's, like, just too many cards that my opponent has now. But they won't be show-and-telling. It does mean they'll probably be flipping into a new attract. They only have 11 cards in their deck. They know about my Cart Clan Ironworks now, but they don't have a 
counter, hopefully. But they do have an Oko, which can turn off like my Wellspring, which is very annoying. It's actually super annoying. I mean, there's chances we can still win through this if they don't have interaction. So, like... But they do have one mana of Besage you, and we don't even have a basic in our deck. So, probably can't go through that. Black Lotus. They guess have a... I don't know. If, I guess they can brainstorm into a force. How many forces are gone? Second force, third force, fourth force. Okay, all all fourth all the forces are gone. Uh, we haven't really played very much magic. We only played uh blue black saga where they didn't we didn't really see anything, and then our opponent kind of didn't want to play our last round. <laughs> all right, so my opponent looks like they're going to hold open brainstorm besage you here, which makes some sense to me. I don't know. I feel like you could just go brainstorm right now and then br and play an Oko, and you still have the ability to besiege you, unless they have like one negation or something in their deck and they have that in hand. Maybe. Sure. Um. All right. So draw. Time vault. Okay. Well, we're just jamming a Kark Clan Ironworks here, right? Like, oh, maybe they have, they don't have a force in their deck or in their hand, right? At all, because they have four forces gone. All right, so I am going to play an Ironworks. I could also make this patchwork lethal, and they have to, oh, they had the one of negation in hand that they didn't, they drew for turn. Wow, that's pretty good. Yeah, they have they have their their hands is two unknowns, brainstorm, Oko, and Besage you. Oh, maybe they're holding open um Besage you and Pay on the Automaton in case the Automaton was lethal. Yeah, they have one negation in their deck and they had it in hand. Um I'm gonna draw with top and try to find a land. Yeah, this is Saga. All right, well, they have no counters left, and they have an Oko and a Besaju, and they have 11 cards. I think this game is still technically winnable, but not really. <laughs> The, the negation was pretty problematic here. Ten cards left. Attack. Oh, they're definitely going to leave the Besaju open. They're, like, leaving everything super open. Play it in Mana Crypt. Now they have a million mana. Can't really deal with, like, this Oko either. Besides, like, winning in one turn. I also don't have any lethal, like, patchwork attacks anymore because they went up to eight, eight, 18. Like, last turn, theoretically, if, like, uh, I don't know, say the KCI resolves, then, like, there's a, definitely a chance they have to chump the patchwork. And chump, I mean, trade with the patchwork. I guess last turn there were also theoretically like unblockable patchwork attacks. 
I don't know. We really needed... I thought we might resolve the KCI because my opponent had no Force of Will left in their deck, but they had the one negation. So that was kind of rough. Because if the KCI resolves, we're going to get a bunch of... We're going to get a bunch of mana back. We're going to get draw cards. Um, like They'll probably end up assaging the KCI in response, but it would have been okay. I think they're just going to turn off this Wellspring, if I had to guess. How do I know they only have one negation? I know their list. It was either zero or one pre-board. Uh, I don't know about commanding, right? They, like, they had to besiege you for sure. It would definitely be a higher chance to win though. I think they should just turn off the Wellspring. I can't sack it if it's an Elk. Oh, they're going to turn off the Patchwork Automaton. Interesting. Is it not worth it to play a basic for Besaju? Correct. I do not believe there are enough Besajus or Ghost Quarters in the format to, wor to warrant playing a basic. That was an active decision that I made. Wait. If I just strip mine this Orchard, I can play around Besaju now. Well, they have lifelink, so it doesn't actually matter about the patchwork being a 7-7. Seven, seven. But I can at least kill Oko. I only die in one more attack. I should have done this on their end step, obviously, but I was not really ready for this sequence of tapping. Ah, oh, they go for workshop. Okay, I should not have forced this through. I did not even think about that line. I mean, maybe we can Volt Key then, right? If we just draw the right Vanus. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, if I don't want a basic, I definitely don't want one of those other cards. <laughs> a basic is better than those other cards. So this game looks kind of winnable now, doesn't it? Oh, should I, I should have shuffled so I didn't draw this top, right? Or did I want the top? Well, I don't know. There was a lot of things happening there. I think I should have shuffled away the top then. Because our new play is to Volt Key my opponent. And they shouldn't have any answers left in their deck. So, theoretically, this could work if I just hit the mana that I need. I guess giving me a spin is good, though, right? Because I can spin and hit a Black Lotus or something. I don't know. Oh, I guess they could have second Oko here. What does that matter, though? All right, so I need to get three total mana. But it can't be a workshop if we spin. I mean, we definitely draw first. It's another saga. Hmm. I think I was supposed to not... I think I was supposed to shuffle away the top. 
Oh wait, uh, no, a workshop doesn't get me there. If I, if I, if I, if I shuffle, if I spin. Maybe I should be getting a black lotus and trying to find my key. A workshop doesn't get me there if I spin because I won't have the ability to untap my, with my thing. Like I have to get my key with this and then I need to find the way to play my time vault and tap it. But I, if I hit a Lotus or a key off of my spin, that would work. So I think we're supposed to spin. Ancient Tomb, Emerald. So those don't work. So now we need to blind hit something, right? Because if I draw an ancient tomb and I get a key, then I... Okay, so actually a workshop still wouldn't have worked. But an ancient tomb also doesn't work. Because if I get a key and I play my time vault, I'm one minute short, right? I need a black lotus or a, a key. All right, so I should get Black Lotus off of my Urza Saga so that I can theoretically draw a KCI. But there's actually not enough artifacts for KCI to matter either. Oh, wait, what about Mental Misstep? They still have Mental Misstep. Mental Misstep could be in their hand. Get Lotus, play Trawler, Saga, Sack, get Lotus back. I don't think that's good. I can go back and look at it at the end of the game, though. I guess technically I can still get Black Lotus, and I can still go Trawler, Ravager. That's just not good, though, right? I guess I, if I draw my, my my emerald right now with my top, but then I won't have a top. So if I hadn't spun, I would have had an additional mana, is what you're saying? Possibly. But I still have those lines if I draw like a workshop off of this this top. I think that's better lodestone golem okay there's de it's definitely possible that there was a better sequence there if i don't spin and i have five mana but i don't have Like, I sack a Ravager once, and then I'm, I, I, because my opponent turned off my other artifacts, I don't really have a lot of good, I don't think I have a lot of, like, really good art, uh, controller Ravager lines there. Because if I, if I had a bunch more artifacts in play, then I feel like it would be true, but I didn't, I don't know. I felt like we had a chance of bulking our opponent. Oh my god, I don't even have a cage in my deck. I have an arc I have an Argenta Masticor. That is it. Uh, that is it. I guess I have a walking ballista. And a walking ballista and an Argenta Masticor. I guess I have a chalice on the play is probably good. No look. 
search for key, exchange at random. We're really supposed to never look? That can't be higher percentage. There's just no way that that's, that's right. Really? Exchange at random for a one of card? Oh, oh, we're looking for lands though. Oh, oh. If we have a key and we have a thing. Oh, then yeah, that's way better. Why did we do that? Because then we just need to hit any two mana producing thing. Oh, I guess we have Ravager, so we don't actually need Ballista. Oh, wait. I will... Ravager doesn't sack a spirit token, though. I'm, like, trying to give us outs to, to, to Oath, guys. I guess we have one ring. That's pretty damn good, actually. Uh, they're playing, like, maybe Energy Fluxes. Just do this and this. Submit. Two shop, four tomb, lotus crypt, also mana vault probably. I don't think needle for Oko is worth it, or needle for Besiju or whatever. Like you just don't. That's just like not how the games usually play out. Yeah, that okay. I see what you're saying. You you just you save your mana and you force yourself into a situation where you are drawing you're drawing one card blind for any two mana producing thing. Yeah, that's probably better. Uh, all right, I think we should play into Mind Break Trap. Hold on, let me just check their list. Not me list. Um, six, they have one Mind Break Trap, two Fluxes. All right, I'll play around Mind Break, tra mind break Trap. Do we beat Misstep with that line? Only if it's not a Mana Vault. Ah, uh, Ancestral Recall. That's a good one. They couldn't even target me. Mox. Mox. And another card? You have a Demonic Tutor here? Must be a Demonic Tutor, right? And Love a draw. Oh, I wonder if they brought in Ley Lines against us. Those would be pretty good, too. Our deck can't really do much about that either. Interesting. And black. Oh, they demonic for Black Lotus and they show and tell. Oh, flash. Okay. Uh, all right. <laughs> they hit Sapphire Time Walk. <laughs> all right. Okay, opponent, I see you. So they get one oath. They get Orchard, maybe. maybe they might not use Orchard because we have protection right now. Uh, so... Fluster? They kept in Fluster? I have zero targets for Fluster Storm. Come on, not me. You gotta do better than that. Uh, Orchard, Time Walk, Sapphire, Oath, Fluster Storm.
Oath, Fluster, Orchard is with a card. They can't even tap the Orchard right now, but they can do it next turn. This Oko, turn off my ring. I mean, I know their list. I, I can tell you they have better choices. Uh, they're going to turn off the ring. This means that they can't uh, play an Oath this turn, though. So this was a bit of a mistake from them. Uh, unless they have another land in their hand. Yeah, like like their entire sideboard is better than a Fluster Swarm. Okay, so they can't actually tap this. So, all right, we at least have a turn off of Oath here. But we, how do we beat an Oko? <laughs> like, my opponent just drew 8 million cards. Like, we're going to die. Like, you can bring a Sphinx of the Steel Wind in and it's a blue card. Like, they're, they're, everything is better. Uh, okay. So, they didn't hit any forces off that first one. So, at least there's something there. Right, I'm going to play a Soul Ring. And then I'm going to play a Wellspring. I'm going to draw a card. And then I'm going to play... A Ravager and a top. <laughs> oh, I don't really want to play my Trawler because then I lose my Trawler to Oko. It's probably better to just play a Ravager. The question will be, do I want to sack my Wellspring now? I don't think so. Force them to... Uh, maybe maybe I'm just like forcing them to activate on my Ravager. I think this is fine. Oh, I should have attacked, obviously. Uh, I just clicked through it. Oh, never mind. They have, they have Vamp for Yogwell and we lose. It's not fine. God damn it. <laughs> they just played every piece of restricted cards and killed us on turn one, basically. Damn. There was, like, nothing we could have done here. Our, our deck is just, like, not strong enough to beat this. Yeah. My deck cannot beat magic cards. I beat the Collector Roof deck. Uh, but not me. I mean, I almost beat a resolved Atraxa in game one. I had outs. I didn't play very well, but I had outs. That game, I had no outs. I just, I got oath. All right, here we go. I can't believe it took me three rounds to realize our deck can never beat a jewel opponent, but that's okay. We're on the play here up against possible Sultai midrange. Oh, Luris. Maybe Sultai Luris. This hand looks pretty good. Keep. How much mana does this hand have? I can play an Ironworks on turn one, but I don't really think that's the best play because I feel like getting a Saga going is better. Though, if my opponent plays turn one Collector Oof, then then there's some upside to having, a, having gone all in on turn one. And by all in, I mean we just like sack the... The pearl and we play a wellspring that's probably worth it i guess the first thing i should do is see if i get mental mist up because that will change things as well all right we're going in chat turn one ironworks sacking pearl playing Iker wellspring You don't have a Vigor, do you? Oh, you have a Force of Will, but you're not Force of Willing the Ironworks. You're Force of Willing the Iker Wellspring. Interesting. Interesting. Do we play top and spin top? 
We're losing a lot of our mana by doing this, but we do have an Ancient Tomb Mana Saga still. Probably not. Probably not worth it. I guess if my opponent has a Collector Oof in hand, it would make sense not to counter an Ironworks. So... Ah. I feel like our opponents have cast a lot of turn one Force Ancestrals against us today. Maybe we should register those cards, too. Uh, alright. Mox Pearl, Emerald, I should say. Top. Spin Top. Trinisphere? I like that idea. Uh, Emerald? Draw? I don't think I sack Trinisphere. Got it on the Force? Ah, they drew another force. Oh, they had a daze, but uh, <laughs> I would be able to pay for daze. The reason I, I, I ordered it this way is in case they're sandbagging a vigor. I'd like to try to resolve the Trinisphere before I play the Saga. The good news here is I have another Saga coming after the top, right? So even if they play a Collector Oop this turn, I actually have Saga Ancient Tomb as well. So I guess technically I can't play the top and get the... Uh, Saga immediately. But I assume this, this Saga should be winning here. Um, I'm going to just spin in case there's something better than a Saga underneath. Like a, a Scrap a scrap Trawler is probably... No, there's not. I do think it's like continually worth it to be able to keep this top though. So... All right. I think we're winning at the moment versus... Uh, I, I thought that this might be one of our hardest matchups, this Lurus Deathrite Shaman deck, but they haven't cast any Collector Oofs against us yet, so maybe that's part of it. Um, I do think our, our hardest matchup is probably Jewel. I, did, I didn't even think about how bad that Jewel matchup is. The Oath matchup looked pretty abysmal as well. Uh, so they have three cards left in hand. Snap Ancestral? Holy moly, we're extracting maximum value. All right. I mean, they drew the mox in so that they could go snap ancestral here. I guess they could have had a land, right? It's turn three. So I guess it's actually worse for me because now they can draw a wasteland off of this ancestral. The good news here is I, I still have a lot going for me. Basic swamp. Wait a second. Basic swamp. Playing basic swamp. All right, it's an interesting one. Time to make some constructs. Uh -huh. We'll make a boatload of constructs. The scientific term. What am I going to get? A key? For my top? Oh, Force of Vigor. So they did have Force of Vigor. Oh, wait. They just did this. When did they do this? On my main phase with the trigger on the stack? Okay, whatever, sure. Wait, why then? I don't know. Whatever, it's it's okay. I still get uh, a construct. That didn't matter how I sequenced it, right? It just mattered when they cast it. So I'm only going to have one Construct. Yikes. Uh, did we miss two mana off of KCI? Oh yeah, we are in our main phase. I, I just assume this shit all happens in the upkeep. You're right, we did miss two mana off of KCI. True. Why didn't I make a Construct in response? Because I could not make a Construct in response. Because the trigger up was on the stack to give me the ability. So 
So there was no legal way for me to make a construct. I should have made two mana, though. I did not make two mana, and I should have made two mana. I agree with that one. Yeah. We drew a third Saga, so... I rate that as good for the home team. Uh, I won't spin. My opponent has drawn two Ancestrals this game, so... Will it be enough is a question. I haven't seen a Wasteland yet either. Put Luris in hand, sure. Don't care about that very much. And a Bayou. Okay. And something else? And a Besage you. All right. So they have infinite Saga answers. We, we once again do not have a, a basic to get. We, I did tell a chatter why we we didn't have a basic in our deck because I don't think there are enough Besaju decks. And then we have played against three Besaju decks in four rounds, which does make me look silly, I will admit. Um, Do I want to spin before and after? Probably. Ooh, I think we should probably draw that. Oh, I guess we can just not search, right? So that's fine. We just draw that. Okay. No search. I hope you have a third force because you're about to have a lot of pain happen. I guess I'm about to have a lot of pain happen because I keep activating my stupid ancient tomb. I do know the card underneath, right? Or do I not know the card? All right. So sack this, play this, draw a card. Ravager doesn't do anything. Um, do I want to play a land and spin? I think I would rather eat my soul ring and spin. I guess I have a Ravager, so I have a two drop. So I could just sack this Wellspring to draw one deeper before spinning. I drew another Karklan Ironworks. All right, now I spin. I found Black Lotus New Ring. Does that actually like help us in any way? I mean, a new ring is good. Does it like do anything this turn though? I guess it's to look one deeper, but I guess I can sack the ring, play a land, play a ring, draw the ring with draw, redraw my top with the ring. This is like not getting us anywhere though, right? Like it's not doing anything because we don't have any trawlers. We would rather just draw a million cards on our next turn with a ring. Does this deal me damage anymore or no? It doesn't deal me damage anymore, right? So maybe I should have sacked my emerald to play my my one ring before using my tomb. Maybe that would have been better. I feel like I did a lot of things wrong here. Yeah, I probably should have sacked earlier there. Um. Okay, well, I, I have uh, invulnerability, right? So I might as well just attack and go to my next turn where I'll draw a million cards. They have three in hand, including a Lurus. Underground C, two in hand, including a Lurus. I mean, we're going to have an unblockable lethal construct next turn, too. Yeah. Yeah. It, I mean, I, I think the Moonring had a pretty high chance of resolving, so it might have been worth it. 
Uh, all right, so I take two, and then I draw my deck, I assume. It's got to be pretty close to I draw my deck. If not, I draw my deck. It certainly looks like I draw my deck. I could attack with this construct and win, but I feel like I'm not supposed to. I feel like I'm just to play this all the way through. Um, I mean, the minute I hit a scrap troop, I trap trawler. I'm obviously looping forever. I think my opponent's just going to concede. Oh, wait. I guess I don't have unblockable right now because I used my key. So I have to uh, get that back first. So I guess I have to loop. Woo! I'm here to take actions, okay? What do I want to do now? Spin. No, I still don't have any. Uh, still don't have anything, right? I need. I just need one trawler. Wait, what is my? What is my? Uh, what does this guy have? Can I do anything with this guy? Oh, I can just get a walking ballista. That is like. So Super lame, but I guess we can do it. Let's play a new ring. Draw a card. Whatever, we're just going to get a walking ballista. It seems like the easiest thing to do. This is nice. All right. <laughs> we simply have dodged collector roofs this entire time. Uh, okay, so I'm going to bring in the Dismemberino card and the Argenta Masticor card, and then I'm going to take out two Ironworks and a Sensei's Top and a Survey Says, Trinisphere on the draw, One Ring, Trimble One Ring, Trimble Ravager, Ravager. Just trimming things that uh, get oofed. All right, let's try again. Uh, dismember, dismember, patchwork, and a bunch of mana. Yeah, that's probably a keep. A needle on what? On Ironworks? On Ravager? On Urza Saga? Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> when it comes down to it, that makes a lot of sense in my head. In my head, huh? All right, I'm gonna play a patchwork. I'm gonna hold the moxin just in case I draw another patchwork. Oh, I guess uh, maybe I'm supposed to play one moxin so I can dismember collector roof. That's probably true. Just to utilize my mana efficiently. Definitely not supposed to play this crypt out though. 
I do have an ancient tomb to cast with dismember though, so it's not like I have nothing, but I think it's better if I don't, right? Oof, there it is. Oof, there it is. Dismember. All right. Next turn. No, oh, no, no. Not like this, chat. <laughs> Should have played around it. All right, I'm going to play the Mana Crypt out. Hopefully we don't die to it. All right. Classic patchwork automatons. Can they get there? Can't kill them both at the same time with the Force of Vigor. These, this card is really awesome. It's such a cool card. Mm, might not have one. Theoretically, in my old list, it would have been a um, a Godbearer statue. Saves two life with Tomb. That's another part of it. I mean, we're going to use a lot of life in this game, right? We have Mana Crypt. We have two Dismembers. We have Ancient Tomb. I don't... I might not actually have Mana Constraint ones in this list. That That could be true. I mean, what about Karn? Uh, if I had a Karn, then I would be one, two, three, four, um, maybe Karn. I didn't, I definitely didn't do the second pass through. I definitely did it on feels. Uh, I definitely didn't do it. I, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie and say I, I, <laughs> I had an exact thing in mind. All right. My opponent has four mana now. So if they vigor, they can pay for both, um, uh, ward triggers, which is, Pretty bad for me, I would assume. Um, I drew a third dismember. Okay. Oh, this is seems bad for me. I feel yep. Oh, they have a tear asunder and they're paying. Okay. Well, I think that's better for me than having them deal with both of them at the same time. So they are definitely are copying Medvedev's list. Don't think anyone other than Medvedev is playing Terrace under. Put a Luris in hand. Oh, I guess they have Luris bring back Collector Oof, which I won't be able to stop. And I'm not going to have a lot of life left. I did play out this Mana Crypt for damage. Mystic Forge. That's a that's a card that could have been restrictive on our mana, Andreas. That one, that's, that's one that could have been restrictive. <laughs> Four mana spell, but... uh. Can play a lot more mana than four here. Oh, come on! You have Force Blue card? Ah. So their last card is Luris. So they're going to play Luris Collector Roof this turn. I'm going to dismember losing eight life. Maybe. I mean, do I have a choice? I feel like I don't have much of a choice, right? I take eight, I go to five. I have to lose two crit flips to lose the game. They have one card in hand. I guess I could theoretically kill the Luris and not kill the Collector Oof, in which case I'll be at nine. I have to lose three flips. Two flips. If I draw an artifact this turn and the next turn, that would be lethal. I mean, at the very least, I'm dismembering this Luris. The question is, do we need to kill the S Oof again? We might just not need to. I'm, like, a little worried that I, I might have to, like, dismember the Oof. Like, why? Why do I have to kill this Oof? Like, does it actually, ma does it actually change, at, like, something here? I guess it's just attacks anyways, right? It's going to deal four damage anyways, so... But I have to win... 
I have to win at least one crypt flip and then draw artifact artifact probably. It's a little rough. Lost that crypt flip. So now I'm just 50 50 to die. Well, Spring's a good draw though. Chat. Oh, if I had waited, chat! Nah, that wouldn't have mattered, right? It would have been turned off. Just kidding. I'm lying to you. All right, so if I if they don't play a creature and I attack twice, I win. But if I can't attack twice, I can't win. Damn. All right. We're going to coin flip this game. If my opponent has nothing. If my opponent has something, then we do... Oh, they have a Death Rite Shaman. All right, well, now we have to coin flip this game twice. It's not ideal. I won the flip. Workshop. All right. Attack for lethal. <laughs> oh, they have Besaju as well. All right. Well, we are dead to that. <sighs> Ow. So many answers. So many answers. We're waiting for fun. Maybe they want me to die to my crypt. Ah, fair enough. Uh, all right, it was close. We almost got there. Uh, so on the play, turn the sphere back in. Do we want walking ballista? Even though they have four collector groups in their deck, I feel like we don't. I kind of wonder if we're just like supposed to take out Volt Key, but Key is like good on its own. Maybe we're just supposed to trim a, a Wellspring if we're cutting this many creature uh, sack outlets. Just trimming across the board. Yo, imagine if we drew a Argenta Masticore. I guess I wouldn't have done that much, but. All right. On the play, game three. What do we got? Ooh, hello. Hello there. Hello. What is my sequence here? Ancient tomb, wellspring, no. Jet Soul Ring three ball. Make them have it. If they vigor me plus wasteland me, I guess it puts me in an awkward spot. I could go Ancient Tomb, Jet, Soul Ring, Ironworks, Wellspring, three ball. Obviously, they would all have to resolve. And I would lose my Moxon anyways. I guess we'll see if this Soul Ring resolves first. Like, I have to play my mana before I play my, my Trinisphere. I'm just, like, kind of worried about Vigor and Wasteland keeping me out from... Or locking me under my own Trinisphere a little bit here. Probably worth it. There's a lot of ways that's just instant wins the game, right? Alright. It resolved and there was no vigor, so that gives us a lot of time. If they don't have a wasteland, it's even better. So I could play an ironworks. And then I could sack the jet and play a wellspring. I, I was not around for four of Trinisphere and Vintage. I could just play wellspring and try to draw a land. I feel like it's probably better to just jam an ironworks here and then it's got to be worth it to turn the jet into a wellspring. That feels like it's got to be the case. 
didn't hit a land off the wellspring. Then I have to consider, do I want to sack the wellspring to try to hit a land? Because if I do, I'm losing two mana if I don't hit a land. I guess I could theor I, I don't want to get rid of my soul ring. I barely wanted to get rid of my jet. I could just wait and use the mana next turn. It's probably better. I was definitely hoping to hit a land. I think it was worth it to try to hit a land. I mean, at some point, my opponent is going to have three lands and play Collect Roof. So there is a rush. Um, at some point, I could always drop my Trinisphere, though. So, Which might be now, all things considered. Oh, I'm pretty sure we're supposed to get information first and cat sack this wellspring with no trawler in sight another wellspring i think i'm okay to go down one mana to start on this wellspring dismember So that's an interesting one because we can answer an oof uncounterably. So I can play a Lotus here. I could sack the Wellspring and play a Lotus. And I'm still trying to hit a land drop. All right, hit a Saga. That's great. Okay, so I'm going to play my Saga and play my Lotus. And play my Ravager and pass the turn. Is that better than a top? Might not be better than a top. Might be better than a top. I guess I could, my opponent could always go hold up in three lands and pass, and then go Vigor on Saga Ironworks. Oh, I have not mentioned Besage you. That I have not mentioned. That is, of course, true. Uh, so if they have a Sage you, and then they have a counter for Dismember. Uh, I think I'm going to play a Ravager and pass. They are F6 for what it's worth as well. Uh, all right, so the question is, do they have a land three? And if they have a land three, the question is, what do they do with their land three? Lux would be not great for me, but we would be able to put everything on a Ravager, though, at the very least. Oh, but they're on Luris. I see what you're saying. <laughs> I was definitely not thinking about Flux. <laughs> uh, they've cracked their lands. Where's the third land? They did not crack for a green land, so they're not looking to besage you. I assume this means they have a third land and they want to make a play. I assume. I mean, if they're doing nothing, nothing, then we have this saga, so... All right, so they do have a third land. Are they going to go uh, oof? All right, they are going to go oof. I'm just going to float black, let oof resolve, and then dismember the collector oof for no life. I'm going to go to our turn. And then what do we do? Workshop. Seems like we're playing a Sensei's Top off of Mishra's Workshop. Uh, I like the idea of spinning here and seeing if we have a Scrap Trawler. Oh my lord. We have a Mystic Forge, a Dismember, an Icar Wellspring. What do I want to do with this? I have six minutes on my clock. 
I'm pretty sure I want to play Saga Gaming is what I want to do. So I am just going to leave a dismember on top with a forge underneath it. And I will attack for one and pass. And we have the same play lined up for us. Oh, they had drew a wasteland. Or they maybe they had a wasteland. No, if they had a wasteland, they wouldn't have let me go to Saga 2, right? All right. I will make a construct token. At some point, I might just have to open this Trinosphere up and go for a combo kill. Which would be very disappointing, but... This is a fatal push on my Ravager. Uh, I guess what we do is sack it so that we can spin and spin that Mystic Forge above this dismember. And then Mystic Forge. Wellspring, attack for seven, or do I want to play a patchwork as well? Probably attack for seven first, and then sack wells. Oh, if I sack Wellspring, I think I'm supposed to sack Wellspring. And then sack something to get a patchwork in play. Maybe that's too much. Let's spin and then sack this top while drawing a card. Uh... Oh, I guess I can't play this for free. So maybe this was stupid. I don't know. I kind of want to get a patchwork in play though. So I have another attacker. I I have. Um, I have, uh, yeah, you're right. I could have cast it off the top and using KCI to pay for it. That's true. Sorry. I I'm playing, I'm trying to play a little fast at the moment. So you are definitely correct. Of course. Uh, I'm not playing hundred percent accurate because I have used too much time. Uh, if I made the contract with my op upkeep, I would have sweet va ravager value unless there's there's there there could be sorcery. I don't think there are sorceries that I can think of. Uh, I could have drawn the workshop and played it. Had I not already played a workshop that turn, I thought I'd already played a workshop that turn. Uh, I might, uh, all right. I, I'm like I said, I'm trying to play a little fast here. Um, you might be right though. This must be a Vigor, right? Oh no, they made a bunch of new challenges. Because they have to pay three mana for a spell. So they're going to cast Force of Vigor on my Trinosphere and my token. Oh, they have Tear Asunder on my Trinosphere. All right, I sack my Trinosphere. I still have a Mystic Forge out and a Kark Clan, though. So... I feel like I'm in a good spot. I, I am not in a good spot time-wise, I must say. Oh, if this was the line, then... Oh, okay. If this was the line, I think I could have played better then. And maybe played more things out. I mean, I'm going to play so many cards here, so I don't think it matters too much. 
It's just like, can I execute this in a timely fashion? Sure, I don't care. They're at one. Uh, draw with top, play the top. Uh, sack this and this to play this. Draw with top, play top. Mystic Forge top is obviously very broken for anyone who didn't know. Play this. Ooh, it's an exciting one. Uh, sack. Cast this. Sacking, I don't know, sacking this and this and ah, this is probably not optimal. I'm just trying to get as many creatures in play as I can. All right. They're over it, which is fair. I did not play that very well, but I put myself in time trouble, so that makes it the case. Lots of different things I could have done there that um, could have been optimized. We didn't hit any Scrap Trawlers in our first half of the deck, which made this game a little bit awkward, but I kind of like the way we played it out slowly, uh, made our opponent use their interaction in very specific ways. I think the holding up Dismember for my opponent playing a Collector Roof was a really nice one. Um, yeah, overall, I, I like the way this went. Honestly, it's pretty crazy that we beat Luris Saga, Lur, not Lur, sorry, Luris Deathrite Shaman twice, which is a four collector roof deck, which I thought would probably be our worst possible matchup, but we've we've gotten through that one twice, so we take those. All right, welcome to round five. Trying to play fast here. My opponent is going to reveal a Luris. Exciting. Good luck to you as well. Two and two is not bad for a deck that uh, is probably not that good. This is a sicko hand, though. Look at this hand. Beautiful. Just beautiful. Emerald. Workshop. Lodestone. Boom. Oh, it resolves. We got a resolver. Ding, ding, ding. All right. Let's go. I wish I had some metamorphs. Copy this lodestone, lock them out. Hey, Mox, that's not taxed. Bobble, that's not taxed. Wait a second. Saga. Oh no. Look at my top card. Uh oh. Uh, what's my top card? Arcbound Ravager. Let's look at my top cards. Oh, hello, top cards. What do you want to do here? I want to play a one ring is what I want to do. Is there a sequence here that is better than just draw a ring and cast it? I don't think so. Is there a way I can deploy a patchwork? Not really. So I could spin top, hold priority, draw with ring, and then spin the top below the patchwork, and then ring into the patchwork, so at least I play the patchwork this turn. That's probably worth doing activate top hold priority draw with top draw my one ring spin my top underneath these magic cards and then play a one ring hopefully they didn't draw a force they did not play a one ring, draw with one ring. I'm doing this because I know my opponent doesn't have any removal spells that can actually interact here. Um, obviously, if you think your opponent might have some kind of removal spell there, you, you want to do that maybe after attacking or something. 
They probably just don't have the code set up yet. It's not a big deal. All right, so are you going to go Saga Gaming when we have an active one ring? A bold approach. Uh, all right, well, we're going to cast a bunch of spells pre-combat now. Be oh, they have a Bowmaster. Uh, I don't think I really care, do I? Oh, I guess it kills my golem. Okay, I do care. Hmm. Should I have played around this in a meaningful way? Yes. I should have played my Ravager first, then I could not have died to this. Sick. All right. I am dumb. Good to know. Good to know. I didn't even think about Bowmaster here. But yeah, I could have played around this by just having a Ravager in play. So that was definitely a mistake. That was definitely not good. Good to know is definitely right. We've had a bunch of games that are super weird because of these uh, Bowmasters. It's definitely another issue. Oh, so we found a scrap trawler. Um, we're probably supposed to just draw into it and try to make as big a thing as we can, right? Maybe we're not. What do we really get by doing that? We actually can't get our top back, right? Unless we sack the top. Sack the top to the Ravager here. Get back. And then get it back by sacking the Ravager later. That might be worth it. Wonder what they'll ping. Me. Play a scrap trawler. Now what do we want to do? I mean, we can make a lethal Patrick attacker, but... I mean, we definitely want at least one artifact there. And then I'm pretty sure we want to sacrifice the Ravager to get back our top so we can spin again. Um, do I want counters or do I want mana? I, what, what do I actually know what's underneath my cards, right? A top and then something. I can get mana at any point, though. Let's just sack this Ravager to itself. And get back the top and modular onto the patchwork. Bring back the top. Play the top. And then I'm looking at... I mean, I'm looking for like another top, right? Another top would just... I guess it doesn't go infinite because they have a freaking... They have a Bowmaster. So this is a Wellspring. So, I mean, I can continue. It's just, is it good to continue? Oh, why not? What's the worst that could happen? We die? Oh, I guess I can shoot the the trawler now. So I guess I can't go further. Okay. I, I I don't want my trawler to die. So I guess this was silly. I mean, I kind of want to make this patchwork a lethal attacker, though. 
But unfortunately, my trawler dies the me- the minute I play a wellspring. But I guess I can sack the wellspring and at least get back the top. Is that like wor- and then I get back the ravager? I mean, it's got to be fine, right? I guess I can draw the card first. And then it triggers. And then we sack the wellspring, get back a top. See where they go with the next trigger. And I can always sack the trawler to the ironworks. I can bring back the trawler with my second ironworks. I can also bring back a lodestone golem. Wait, this is the this is so complicated. Wait, how do I win? I can win the game this turn if I find a manifold key, right? Is that the key to this? <laughs> uh, all right, I'll bring back my ravager. It's probably better than a wellspring. Uh, play a Ravager. Play a top. Spin my top. Oh, I can't get back my Scrap Trawler. I have a new one ring. So can I win the game then? I have a new one ring. Oh, but I lost my Scrap Trawler. So I can't. But I, this is good for my next turn, though. This is very good for my next turn where I can just go off without having to worry. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll just sack this emerald and play another ironworks to make a lethal attacker, and then we'll pass after attacking. Well, I guess I didn't need to do that because I could technically Ravager onto it, but I will attack with my 1515, which they have to chump with the Bowmaster, I assume. Maybe they chump with the army because the Bowmaster is slightly better here. Yeah, I guess I could technically get wheeled here. Uh, does that matter, though? I don't think so. I think we're just too far ahead. I need water. That was a pretty crazy turn, huh? I could ca sack ring and trawler with KCI when ca casting the wellspring and get back trawler. N no, it needs a target immediately. Oh, but as part of casting? Uh, I don't know the answer to that question. Maybe. Yeah, I, I never learned those those kind of things because for the most part, you don't need them. But if I had sacked. What do you want me to sack? You want me to sack ring and trawler when casting the wellspring. And that would let me get back trawler. Would that have been good? I didn't even think about ca sacking the ring because I wanted to keep it for the next turn, but you might be right. If we wanted to like go deeper. We had a ring underneath. We can play the ring and turn off Bowmasters, and then with a new Trawler and Mox Wellspring top, we probably go infinite. Yeah, we probably could have won the game that turn then, if what you're saying is true, which sounds like it is. Um, so when we cast the Wellspring, we sacked the Ironworks and the, the One Ring and the Trawler. So Sorry, we sacked the Ring and the Trawler. 
got back the trawler, found a new ring, played the new ring, played the new trawler, and then we would just go off. Okay, so maybe we could have won the game then. I, honest to God, did not even think about sacking the ring at any point in that sequence, so... <laughs> Watch opponent just like get a, a manifold key and then play time vault and kill us. <laughs> After all that, the only spell they've cast this game has been Bobble, Bowmaster, Jet. Who knows what's in their hand? Yeah, maybe we did. Maybe we did. What if we? How many cards deep did we know? The other ring was because like, we definitely want to get to a spot where we play a new ring and then then we have free reign to do whatever we want though i guess that kind of doesn't matter if i just have like two lethal attackers that they can't kill but I, i'm pretty sure the way we lose this game is my opponent just time vault keys us so yeah maybe we could have tried to win that game on that turn then Hmm, kind of makes me sad. Is that how it works? Yeah, we sack. If you're sacking Trawler and Ring as part of costs to cast a spell, then you should be in the graveyard by the time you need to target it. Yeah. Damn, I guess you did need to learn those tricks. <laughs> I, like, don't have any mirror retrievers or anything, so, like, a lot of stuff is simpler. There's no s chromatic spheres, there's no chromatic stars in this version either. So there's, like, not a lot of the problems that you need to learn about mana things for... ...in this version compared to the modern version. I wonder what the opponent's thinking about. Uh, oh, they're double queued in a limited qualifier. Okay. Well, that's probably what they're thinking about. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We might need to play more answers to Bowmaster. Like, I kind of thought we could just combo through it. And we kind of can combo through it. But it's, it's really annoying. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe the answer is just like play some walking ballistas in the main i don't really even hate walking ballista right now in general so there's like some some serious upside to just having access to a walking ballista especially when you're playing a ravager deck rainy mox champ powerful wizardry Oof. all right i'm gonna cut the video sorry about that all right we're back and what do we got demonic tutor for a time twister uh-oh uh-oh hopefully it's not vault key okay they still have a land drop right demonic tutor for vault i mean i guess if they had vault key they would not have well, I guess maybe they didn't have enough mana. Three mana four. Twisties? Saga gaming. Time walk? Twisties. Oh, time walk. Okay. But they can't recast time walk, right? Or do they have a snapcaster in their deck? So they're trying to get to a Volt Key spot, it looks like. Or I guess this will give them a second blocker. So this is, uh, they wouldn't lose to just the Patchworks on board. But, I mean, realistically, probably would. I mean, I have an active one ring. Though I guess if our new one ring gets countered, it's pretty annoying. Four cards in my opponent's hand. Six. 
second Bowmaster plus Twister? 14 me? Oh. Uh, is there anything I want to eat? I can just eat this top, right? Do I need this top? They're just trying to put blockers in play. Three cards in hand. So what's my best sequence here? Is it play the ring first, keep this other ring? Maybe I should have sacked Ravager so they wouldn't have gotten an army token. I guess I technically have nothing if this gets countered. So maybe I made a huge mistake here. I mean, I have an active one ring, but... Keep this one ring. Draw cards. Oh, right, 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 right. I can't get targeted, but I still get comboed. Oh, maybe this is a dumb idea then. All right, well, I'm going to just turn this into mana. I still just need a, a one key to win this game, right? I guess I can't always yield these later on. Yeah, this play seems like it was terrible. What was I doing? I just, like, was thinking about this scrap trawler, I guess. Oh, boy. Yeah, maybe I threw this game, huh? I mean, I still have chances to win. I still have a top that I can draw with, so. But it's kind of annoying. Oh, maybe playing this patchwork thing or this thing out wasn't that good either. I need a forge or something. Nothing. Oh, no. Nothing is bad. Nothing is very bad. Wow. Yeah, I certainly made my life difficult here. I'm just fiddling with the camera cap. Uh, I'm supposed to draw first so that um, they don't get a second army token back. Oh, my God. They're going to get freaking... My thing just dies anyways. All right. Yeah, I mean, I'm playing really badly. I must admit, I feel like I played this game at an extremely subpar level. <sighs> Next turn, I should just like attack with my things first. I guess they're going to dig here. Try to vault key me, maybe. Man, I, I, we're losing it. We're losing track. Where did I go wrong? I mean, I definitely went wrong with the not looking for the sack ring line. Maybe we had a way. I mean, I guess the, the problem is a one ring stops me from dying from the Bowmasters, but it doesn't stop them from killing my trawler, right? Like, I don't have any way for that, like, to stop them from just killing my trawler every time I loop it back. Maybe that's okay. Maybe, like, I have enough clicks and I have enough mana and I can do that. But I don't have, like, um... I, I was thinking that this the protection of the one ring was like would would make it so I don't care about bone masters, but that's not exactly the case. Maybe if I like put a bunch of counters on my trawler or something. I don't know. 
Well, opponent resolved to dig through time here, and they have a land drop, and they have one floating mana. If they don't play another creature, I can at least attack first, make them block, and then uh, then I can draw. Oh, they have... Uh, uh, okay, so now they have a Lurus. Wow, how badly has this gone for me here? Needle. Oh, they're going to needle my one ring in the main? Oh, everything has gone from bad to worse. Okay. This has not gone well for Justin. Because now they have blockers every turn. So now I need to draw my key to get these through. Wow, and I'm losing three life every turn. Wow. Wow. I have really screwed this up. <laughs> hmm. They're going to attack? There's no way. Um... I have I have no cards that get rid of a needle in the main. Um besides like Karn, but at that point Karn's probably already won the game. So I can just sack this ring at the least. That's something. Can I lose this game with a 2020 Patchwork Automaton? Alright, I'm gonna attack first and then. They'll block with both Bowmasters, and then every turn they can bring back Bowmaster to block. We have at least one free play and spin here. I guess we should just do it off of the Academy because... Oh, we should do it off of Workshop and Academy. I need a like a man of Mystic Forge would just be the best. A Cart Clan Ironworks. Not ideal. I will get this automaton in play though. I did know there was an automaton there, right? If I had ordered it correctly, I wouldn't have had to I mean spinning doesn't matter. Alright, well I have another patchwork coming down. Oh, they can just pay for it, because I don't have another artifact. I'm so stupid. Uh, so I had to wait on that one. Because now they can just play a Bowmaster and pay and kill it. Wow, I am just, like, I'm trying to play fast, and I'm just playing badly because of it. They also have a strip mine for my Saga. So, what am I even doing here? I mean, I, I have to make them use a strip mine on the Saga. Uh... I guess it's more of a bait than anything else because we do still have KCIs. Not the Saga, the Patchwork. I am just playing so badly, though. It's crazy. All right, focus, focus, focus. We got water. We have plays here. If our opponent goes for the Bowmaster line, we have outs. We don't have... Uh... All right, so they played a Bowmaster from their yard... And they are targeting the patchwork. Let's let them pay the ward first. And then let's sack it to turn off this trigger. And then we then they have to sack their Luris, right? But I guess they can't really let the patchwork be in play anyways. But this looks like it's one, unless they draw another Bowmaster. Hmm. What a silly game. All right. Attack with my two 2020s. They chump both. Hopefully they don't have a second Bowmaster. A third Bowmaster, I should say. A third Bowmaster would be a problem. Uh, but with no Bowmaster, 
We just clear their board. They can only make one token. Looks pretty good. Might scam the game. I feel like we played the beginning section of this game super, like, super well. Except for the miss on the maybe going for more loops, but... I feel like the end section has been a series of mistakes, but we're almost there. We're almost through. Someone will win either way shortly. All right, I will cast a top. I will resolve a top. I will spin a top, and then I have a new Ravager. Sure, I feel like we want to draw a Ravager, and then we'll play a Ravager. All right, we scammed a win there. I do think my opponent played this game better than me, but maybe my deck was just too good. <laughs> just kidding. All right, so they have a main deck needle. I feel like there's just so many cards that answer what I'm trying to do. It's very hard. Um, I'm going to board out Trinisphere and Chalice on the draw. Oh, I don't have Chalice in the main. I'm going to board out the Trinisphere, and I feel like I might want a needle for opposing sagas and volt keys. I feel like the ballista sounds like really good too. I, I almost wish I had a couple ballistas in the main. Um, blue, black, blue, black. The fact that they can just get a needle and turn off ring is really rough. I didn't really consider that too much. I don't think it's like so bad that I need to board in dismembers for bowmasters. I don't really like that idea very much. I also don't really like the idea of, like, bringing... I guess maybe a Soul Guide Lantern makes some sense as a value saga. But, like, what, but like, when are we ever having a saga actually complete? Like, that has not happened, like, at all versus this matchup. So I'm not sure. Um, I wasn't going to trim an Inspector, a Works thing, uh, a thing, and a Ravager. Sure. I'm just going to trim some cards and, and hit Submit. Seems fine. This gives us options. <sighs> All right. I used up how much clock? I have 11 and a half and they have 10. Okay. So at least I'm not super behind on clock. But the only reason I'm not super behind on clock is because my opponent was playing another match where I was just taking lots of game actions. Not enough mana in this hand. We mulligan. Ugh, not enough mana in this hand either, but I think it's a keep. I'm going to bin the three mana card. And we're going to have to jam with our Saga Gaming here. Time Vault. Not bad with Saga Gaming. One drop. How does that make you feel? Good? Bad? Spell Pierce? Mental misstep? Pass. End of turn. Vamp. End of turn... Lorian revealed. Okay, Lorian revealed. Underground C. Will we get wastelanded? Survey says no wasteland. Underground C. Pass. Probably holding open Bowmaster. The real question becomes, are we straight jamming Time Vault here? It's just like no way, right? I feel like you have to play Automaton. Definitely want to, don't want to jam Icker, Wellspring, or Ravager because if we're looking at Bowmaster from their side, Brainstorm. Okay. Are they are they scared of the Patchwork Automaton after last game's shellacking by the 22-22? Force it. I dare you. Force it, force it, force it, force it, force it. Steal Sabotage it. Counter it. It's impossible to kill. It's infinite power and impossible to kill. There's no counterplay. I'm trying to play really fast, chat, because if we have to play three games, uh, I'm worried for my my likelihood of winning. I 
first saga is probably just gonna get a soul ring if I don't get wastelanded, so I can start making saga tokens. Another saga. Okay, I'm definitely getting a soul ring. I get a soul ring and I get to play the time vault and hold open saga activations. I guess they have hard cast negation now, but I mean, I don't really want to play Wellspring or Ravager, right? I mean, triple saga is not a GG. Definitely not a GG. If they have any combination of like magic cards that deal with magic cards. Soul Ring, Third Saga, definitely not attacking into this either, unless they tap out. All right, I will play my Time Vault now. This is a must counter, which is nice. Also plays around Spell Pierce this way. I guess they could have a needle, so it's not a must must counter. Uh definitely not attacking into a patchwork trade here. Uh sorry, a, a bone master trade here. I don't think that looks very good for me. I mean, depending on what my opponent's got for anti artifacts, could be a great spot. Uh they do have just have Hercules recall. Damn. Uh, so I float my mana, and do I want to draw a card? Probably doesn't matter. So I float my mana, let it return to hand, and then uh, activate my Saga. Turns out you can answer everything that Saga does with one card. Crazy. No way. Right, and then I still have the floating mana, so I can actually activate my Saga here. Obviously, this token will die to a Bowmaster on the next turn, but it's better than losing all of my stuff, right? And then we still have a Saga's coming to completion here, so I can still get a Manifold Key and still put another Time Vault in play looking for a kill. Um, so we still have a lot of game to play in this one. Obviously, our lands keep disappearing, which is problematic for us casting the seven cards in our hand, but... <sighs> Hopefully we'll draw a workshop off the top and everything will be okay. I'd love a workshop off the top. But yeah, lot, lots of lots of lots of play for in this game. Lots of uh, I've been watching a lot of the uh, PDA candidates, so I would say there's a lot of life left in this position. We got two players playing for the win. I guess that's just always true at all times in Magic, huh? All right, so they have their own Saga. I'm just supposed to go keying here, right? I feel like the way, the longer this game goes, the worse it is for me. Ah, they did have the negation. Okay. And it's a negation, not a uh, force of will. Because a force of will, I can bring it back with Trawler. Negation, it's exiled until I get it with Karn. So, we got a Bowmaster, a Saga, three cards in hand. I've got a ton of action, but no mana. But I could always go... Oh, they drew an Ancestral. Sick. Oh, the Ancestral targeting me? Really? Does that mean they have a Twister as well? Wow! Ancestral target me, Time Twister kill you. <laughs> wow, who said Triple Saga GG? It is too slow, man. Saga is just so slow. When you're out there casting Ancestral Recalls, doing real things, what's a Saga? All right, that's okay. Powerful plays. 
Uh, I'm going to bring the Chalice and the Trinisphere back in, and I'm going to take this Mastacor and uh, the Needle out. Leave the Ballista. <laughs> Triple Saga. GG for me. Yeah, I mean, just simply play answers. Or kill your opponent. Both of them work. Very nicely done for my opponent there. I had no chances there. Ooh, this one's a nice one. Let's keep this. This has a lot of action. Look at this. This is patchwork, box, patchwork, untap, tons of things happening. I really, really like this hand. Really like it. Lots of threats. Hopefully my opponent doesn't combo kill me again. Force on my patchwork automaton. Well, that's a little rude. Should I play the second one? Yeah, I should play the second one. Let's hope I don't get uh, wastelanded here. I'm not in a great spot to get... Uh, I got wastelanded. All right, well, let's hope I draw land or Moxon. Both are good. Nope. Sad Justin. I mean, if I had jammed my forge, I'd be in the same spot, right? So they got a sandbag Moxon land. All right, there's a Moxon of my own. Not bad. Hopefully this resolves. And then Wellspring. Hopefully this resolves. And did not draw land still. Have a 3-3 three, three attack. Four cards in the opponent's hand. 15 life. And Saga. Uh-oh. By Luris. Can I just get a workshop and play Forge? No. Wellspring. Draw a card. No! I can't draw mana. They're at 11. It's a big patchwork. They countered. Imagine they didn't counter one of my patchworks this game. Damn. Oh, Needle. What's this Needle on? Arcbound Ravager, maybe? Yeah, nice. My opponent's really, really good. They're making nice plays. Ah, I drew an Arcbound Ravager chat. All right, Sensei's top. Spin Sensei's top, I think. Saga Gaming. Is Saga Gaming here better than Ancient Tomb? Yeah, I think I want to make sure they have to use it. Oh, I probably should have ordered that slightly different. Other constructs, so they can block twice now. Lotus. Oh, right, because they have a Luris in hand already. They can go Lotus Luris. But I have a Soul Guide Lantern, so... They have to wait till next turn. Hmm... I should have ordered my lands differently so that I would have been able to draw my Ancient Tomb this turn so that I could have played a Trawler. Though I guess this is still fine. I wish I could have made a 10-10 like a or 12-12 or something here, but I, they, they needled my Ravager. No attack. So now my opponent can play Luris without playing Lotus, and I can't use this Lantern yet. But I have an active Saga now. So, and then when it completes, I can go Manifold Key. Do I hit this right now to stop a possible Delve spell? Does that make sense? I guess I can still cast a Delve spell, so it doesn't do anything. Oh, yeah. Hardcast Lorien revealed. It's pretty good. Currently, these are only 4-4s, four though. So if I can play some spells on my turn... Ah, oh, they drew the Strip Mine. Okay. I know the Ancient Tomb is the next one, right? So I can still play two creatures this turn. 
So I think it's still okay. I can also hit their whole yard right now if I want to. I probably will. I don't have to make that decision yet. So I play a top. Oh, they drew a negation. Wow. I can't make this kill the whole board. So if they block with everything, I lose my lethal threat. Is that okay? I think so. Mm. If they block with everything here, is that okay? I deal two. Wait, no, I can kill the whole board because we'll, they'll lose one, right? It's 10 damage. Okay, so I can kill the whole thing. They're probably just going to chump, right? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to clear their yard. And then I draw Ancient Tomb next turn, and I can slam Trawler or Forge. Hercules Recall. That's a good one. Ancient Tomb, Patchwork Automaton, Mox. Mox. Wellspring. Mox. I don't know if that Hercules was a good play from them. They might have just been a rushed play. Ancestral off the top? Oh, no. Ancestral off the top is so bad for me. That's so crazy. I feel so... Ah, uh, Ancestral off the top. They draw another removal spell. Uh, that's fine. Oh, they targeted me. I really need this Ravager. I really need to be able to sack to the Ravager. If I had, I, if I wasn't getting needled, I think I would win this game from here. I need a sack outlet. Yeah, this stupid. This there's no sack outlet. Man, what a nightmare! Hercules into ancestral, huh? Lotus on top. No. No. 
No. Ah! It's frustrating. I think with a Ravager, I'm fine here because. No, I'm beating just Hercules. If it's just Hercules, I'm okay. It was the Hercules into Ancestral into Removal that was the problem. I'm okay with Hercules there. It's not that big a deal. It just draws them like a, a turn. Like it's not that big. If there was no, if there was nothing on Ravager here, I could definitely clear their board. Or like draw through my deck or something. So that, that was a huge problem. But I felt like we were, like we rebuilt, like right after my opponent Hercules, I replayed my patchwork and it was immediately a 5-5. Five -five. And so like we were actually fine until they untapped the next turn and drew Ancestral into Fatal Push, right? Ah, this was frustrating. I don't know about this game. We just didn't hit any mana, right? So we were con constrained the whole time. I mean, it was good to have a bunch of Vox in against Hercules, but... <sighs> so close. So close. All right, here we go. Sixth and final round of this Vintage Challenge. We are now two and three battling Jose, who's been playing a lot of Mono White recently, uh, but is known to play a bunch of combo decks as well. Uh, they have a Chancellor of the Annex, which is literally impossible for us to do anything about so not great i cannot pay for a chancellor no matter what here human is it like a dauntless dismantler as well or is it a thalia or yeah dauntless dismantler that's a good one against my deck it's like really really good against my deck <laughs> it's so bad for me all right i'm going to get this mana vault countered uh, and then I am going to play a, um, what am I going to play? I can only play one spell because it all comes in tap. I want to play this, this Wellspring. Kind of want more options. I don't think we're going to be able to combo through a Dauntless Dismantler, for what it's worth. I actually don't know how we're going to beat this deck at all, because my opponent has four Archon, four Dismantler, four Thalia, four Null Rod. Like, it's going to be challenging. We have four Dismembers in the board. They have Double Cavern. Archon? Yeah, buddy. I uh, heard you didn't like to... <laughs> Mono White Initiative is basically the new Shops deck. It just does not let you play the game. Uh, I guess I can play this Ravager, I guess. I don't know. I get to play one land and one spell every turn, and my lands come into play tapped, and my artifacts, which are my entire deck, come into play tapped. And then they have a Seasoned Dungeoneer on Curve. Yes. Yes. Good. We are so dead. We should have won the die roll. If we won the die roll, I think we would be in a good spot. <laughs> we did not win the die roll here in the 2-3 bracket of decks that are not playing Ancestral Recall. Karn, the Great Creator. Well, that's not a castable magic card now, is it? Saga Gaming. I'm not even sure thought I loved Archon. Oh, I mean, Archon is an unreal magic card. It's super strong and super powerful and happens to completely destroy my entire deck. <laughs> I, I, I can't, I can't, I can't. All right, well, let's go to game two. It's just, just no point. I can't actually play the game. I lost the die roll and thus I did not, was not able to play the game. All right, I, I get to bring in four Dismember, though, so that's nice. I'm going to take out Trinisphere, but I'm going to keep in Chalice on the play. 
And then I'm going to keep in Karn on the play. And I'm going to keep in... I'm not going to play Lodestone at all. I don't feel like that does enough. I'm going to trim a top and an Ironworks and an Inspector. Don't ask why. All right, how many Null Rods are in the sideboard is this the next question? I actually have... Oh, I need an Argentum Masticor. Where's my Argentum Masticor? That's my only answer to a Null Rod. Uh, I don't feel like this matchup is that bad if we won the die roll. Oh, they have three Null Rods in their board in case they needed more cards to beat combo. That's a good hand. Keep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just needed to win the die roll, for sure. This is definitely not our best hand, um, but it's fine. Lotus, Automaton, Ruby, Wellspring... Academy Strawler go. Though I guess if my opponent plays a uh, Chancellor again, then all that goes to shit. <laughs> Man, Chancellor is so annoying for our deck, huh? Nope, they have a Chancellor. All right, well, now what do we do? Throw the Ruby into the Chancellor and then play Patchwork uh, Wellspring. Or do we throw the Lotus into the Chancellor and then play... Ruby Automaton seems worse. Man, Chancellor has been a problem. You kind of like trawlering back Lotus. So how how are you gonna do that, friend? Uh, speak speak. Uh, how 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 are you gonna do that? How 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 we're how are we gonna troll our back lotus? You must know something I don't know. <laughs> Magic, I don't have that. Wasteland Gaming. Ch Wasteland Chalice, huh? Okay. Saga gaming. Maybe they'll... We don't actually have a basic to get with the initiative, do we? <laughs> uh, maybe we just have to play a basic in our deck. Correct. Uh, Dauntless Dismantler. Is this one worth dismembering? Probably. Workshop? Oh my, that one. Should be a one mana sack outlet too. That'd be nice. Get it off Saga. Got a third mana. No, no third mana. Nice. Uh, another scrap trawler. What are we getting off this? Sensei's top. Key. Sensei's top looks pretty good. Well, my deck wins by looping zero drops, so Chalice on zero makes sense to me. All right, I'm going to board out my Chalice on the draw. We were able to successfully vanquish our opponent here. I guess we do want this Ballista, huh? Yeah. Like, naming one just doesn't really do anything, so... All right, game three on the draw. I'm going to keep. No Chancellor, but what's their turn one play? Is it an Archon, a Thalia, a Null Rod, a Dismantler? Mox Pearl, that's a good one. Ancient Tomb, Anointed Peacekeeper, Wasteland, Gauntless Dismantler, Null Rod. All right, that's not bad for me. That's That is not that bad for me. Of all the things that could have happened, that is not that bad for me. Because they just turned off their white source. And I have a, a pretty good mana set here. 
I mean, it's not good for me. Don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not happy about it. <laughs> what do you mean? They look better now. They look, they got the nice gold trim. Cleric? This is how it's supposed to look. Saga Gaming. Do we make them be our Saga Gaming here? Or do we just play a big ballista? I feel like I go Wellspring Draw, Mox, Mana Crypt, Talarian. Nah, I'm going to make them kill this Saga, actually. I kind of don't want them casting a spell next turn, so I think I want to take them off a of land. I'm going to use my Saga as a Wasteland, hopefully. Because I don't think they can let me have this. Oh, do they just draw a White Source so they can play whatever they need now? White Plume Adventure. I mean, this means we get a Construct. Can they beat a Construct? I'm not sure they can beat a Construct. So I'm going to play Emerald, Mana Crypt, make... Oh, I guess I don't have to make it right now. I guess I can play a top if I make it right now. Make a Construct. How big is it? It's only a 2-2. Two -two. Hmm. I'm trying to like see if I want to make this Ballista yet. I kind of have to now that I played my Mana Crypt out. <laughs> I also want to make this construct as big as I possibly can. I guess I could just play my Telerian Academy and play a 2-2 Ballista, and then I have a 6-6 construct and not activate right away, because what the upside is I just get one more, one more plus one plus one. I know we can make a huge... I guess I could just play at Ironworks. I guess, I mean, the problem is I get, I mean, they they have to wasteland my saga, right? I don't know. Whatever. I'm over it. <laughs> my opponent is forging onto an adventure here. Uh, the classic two planes in their deck. Draw the planes to cast your creature. I guess they had a cleric uh, cavern anyways, so I guess any land does it. But my opponent, like, deck doesn't really function that well under Null Rod. Like, you gotta kind of have some very specific lands. I mean, we, we have a big construct, so as long as they don't have a solitude... I guess they could have a Lorian... Uh, not Lorian. Loran? Loran? Loran... Yeah, it's definitely important to play out Crypt and a Spell because I think I want a 6-6. Six, six. It might have been better to play out top off of Workshop instead of using my Academy, though. But if they don't Wasteland my Saga, then, like, they can't ever really win. But I guess if they have double Wasteland, like if they top deck Wasteland, then this is worse. This play is worse. So I think what I actually should have done is I should have just used Workshop and played a Sensei's top instead of playing a uh, Cart Clan. Car Clan was like more mana efficient, but uh, it exposes me to some possible top decks from my opponent. All right. I am going to make a huge construct token. I assume you have a way to kill it, or else I doubt this would have happened. Lauren? Yeah. All right. Well, not great for me. Also known as I'm dead. <laughs> I am so dead. Extremely dead. I cannot live. What a sad happening this was here. So frustrating. But when you have it, you have it. 
Yeah, this deck is just not good. It's so fun, and it can win games, but it's just not good. They have another <laughs> white blue. Yeah, I guess uh, Mox, Emerald, Null Rod, uh, my white source does not matter if you just have all the lands in hand anyways. Wait, what is this? This attack is terrible. Attack with both, right? Oh, whatever. Doesn't Probably doesn't matter. That attack looks really bad from my point of view. Oh, they have a Solitude as well. I see. I see. Okay, you're right. The attack was great. <laughs> yes. Very nice. Very nice. Perfect. Okay. All right. Well, I had no chance of winning, so that was fun. Uh, yeah. Maybe we'll get our money back for this endeavor. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. We may get our money back from this endeavor. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, I don't think that this deck has gotten better since the last time we played it. I believe this deck has gotten worse. Um, there are just the decks that are in vintage right now are just so powerful and so tuned and so hostile to this what we have going on here there's basically no deck that i would say we want to really face um maybe like a shop's mirror uh maybe bizarre but i don't even know if that's true like the Luris Death Rite Shaman deck, we beat it twice, but I can't imagine that matchup is good. The Luris Blue Black Luris Saga deck is definitely a winnable matchup, um, but the Bowmaster makes things like really complex and annoying. Uh, we can never beat Jewel. We're never going to beat Oath. Uh, Mono White seems bad, but you can win on the on the play. So I guess if you win the die roll against Mono White, you have some chances. Um. But yeah, as much as I'd love for this deck to be good, it just does not look good. It doesn't really feel good. Uh, what does feel good is Patchwork Automaton. We should take out some positives from this experience. Patchwork Automaton was fantastic. At no point was I unhappy that I had Patchwork Automaton in my deck, and at multiple points, it was very large and very in charge. So um, I know basically every single sphere-based workshop deck not that this is a sphere-based workshop deck but, but basically every single workshop deck that's not a jewel is playing patchwork automaton at this point but i, I i'm very I'm, I'm it's my i find a very interesting story because this card was previewed and everyone was like oh this card is probably really good in shops but we'll have to see how the sequencing plays out because it kind of doesn't doesn't vibe very well with the sequencing of spheres and that kind of thing <coughs> and when it was kind of when it came out it didn't really have a a crazy big reception. People liked it, and they some people liked it, some people didn't like it. It was like a, yeah, this card, you could play it, um, but it can be kind of awkward sometimes. Now, I think we're at the point where this card just feels like the best, one of the best possible cards you can be playing in Workshop. The Ward 2 is extremely, extremely relevant, and sometimes very hard to pay. So, pretty fun, pretty interesting card. Um, I love this deck. I wish this deck was good. If I was going to go to an FNM and I knew maybe all what everybody was going to play, then maybe I would play this deck. But as far as a vintage challenge goes, uh, I would not recommend this to people. And that also goes for anyone who's wondering about things like uh, Smelting Vat. Smelting Vat's another uh, one of my artifact combo creations. I just don't think there's any reason to play a mud, no blue artifact combo deck uh, with Workshop over a Jewel deck. Um, and then there's also, like, there's definitely some upside to playing something that's more of a, a Blue Ring Workshop deck, uh, like the 40k, Warhammer 40k deck. But basically, we're kind of entering a point in Vintage, again, where you really should be playing the Blue Power. You really should be playing Wasteland. You really should be, like, thinking about... <laughs> And if you're not playing those cards, you need to be having doing something very convincing um, to make up for it. So, hope you all enjoyed the very first Friday Vintage Challenge. Uh, like I said earlier, it's going to be uh, variable week to week. I'm probably planning on streaming the Saturday still more than the Friday. But if things come up on a Saturday, um, like this weekend, 
Uh, it'll be great that I can stream on a Friday night instead and still get you one challenge every week of vintage action. There are now, for anyone who doesn't hasn't seen, there are four vintage challenges every week. Check out uh, mtgoupdate.com is a good place where you can see the the things laid out in front of you. For me, on East Coast, it is a, a weekday, Thursday stream, week, uh, Friday night stream, and then the two, or Friday night challenge, I should say, weekday, Thursday challenge, which I can never stream that one. Um, and then, obviously, the two normal Saturday and Sunday ones. So, new vintage content on this YouTube channel every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I'll see you then. Thank you.